So what if the stereo center isn't that on the carbon directly adjacent to? It would still be in the molecule, so the, the two hydrogens and the CH2 would still be different. Okay. They would still be different. Now, one point though is, all of these are just theoretical predictions. All of these are just theoretical predictions, and the reason is sometimes two hydrogens are in different environments, but the environments are very similar. And therefore, they're going to give different peaks that are very close to each other. Well, if the peaks are really very close to each other, they might blur into each other on the printout. So you might easily see printouts that have fewer peaks than you might expect. In fact, oftentimes you'll get something on a printout that kind of looks like this. That is, you get what might be technically called a mess, because you have a bunch of peaks that are so close to each other, you can't even count how many peaks there are. So all the things we've been going over so far were just the predictions for the maximum number of peaks. But if some of the hydrogens are in different but very similar environments, they might have peaks at different but very similar deltas. And they might be so close you might not be able to distinguish them on the printout. So that's something you have to watch out for. That's not that unusual, actually. And I think that that might sometimes happen here. If the CH2 group is not right next to the stereo center, the two hydrogens will be only in slightly different environments. So even though they're going to give you two peaks, you might or might not be able to see the two peaks on your printout. I would think that the stereo center would have more effect the closer it is to the CH2 group. So even though theoretically the stereo center always makes these two hydrogens non equivalent, if the stereo center is a long way away, it might not be close enough that you can actually distinguish the two different peaks on your printout. Yeah, so to give you an example of what I was talking about. How many peaks would we predict here? Theoretically, we predict five peaks. Mm -hmm. Why would this have a different peak than A? Because this is much closer to the fluorine. The mm -hmm. fluorine is the thing that's making the right-hand side different from the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. However, both B and C are already pretty far away from E. So even though they might have different peaks, they might be so close to each other you can't tell. And again, those peaks might blur into A over here. Mm -hmm. So you're not necessarily going to get five distinct peaks on the printout. You might get something that's kind of you might be able to clearly see the difference between E and D. There's a big difference between E and D because these hydrogens are right next to the fluorine and these are one carbon away. Mm -hmm. But then A, B, and C are actually different but pretty similar to each other and you might just get a mess down here where it's difficult to count how many peaks there are. So even though theoretically there's five different peaks, some of the peaks might be so close that you can't distinguish them on the printout. And that's not that unusual. That especially happens when you have, say, a long carbon chain. Because when you have a long carbon chain, even though theoretically these are different, they're pretty, they would be pretty close to each other. So oftentimes the peaks blend into each other. And that's one of the things that makes interpreting proton NMR more challenging, and that's why it takes some practice. Okay, now looking at your lecture notes here, I can see that he actually talked about that substitution test that I was mentioning. He said another way to determine equivalence is to substitute the hydrogens and determine their relationship. But like I said, um, I think we'll just skip that. I think the method we've gone over here is good enough for the types of problems you're going to see. I'm um, also, I'm going to skip this because it's just, it's pretty hard and we don't want to be, uh, we can't, we don't have time to go over every single idea. So we've gone over the basic ideas for the number of peaks. Um, we haven't quite gone over the stuff that you might see on the hardest questions, but I think we've gone over the stuff you would see on easier or moderate questions. So we need to go on to our, our next topic. So remember that we're supposed to get four different types of information from the proton NMR. The first type of information is the number of peaks. And we've got a good introduction here to how do you figure out the number of peaks. Different connectivity means different peaks. Same connectivity usually means the same, uh, same peaks, except for these exceptions here. If you have hydrogens with a different cis-trans relationship to other substituents, they would be different peaks even if they have the same connectivity. And if you have two hydrogens on a carbon, CH2 group, in the presence of a stereo center, again, they're connected to the same carbon, but they would still give different peaks. And now, the important thing is to try to find some practice problems for yourself to, uh, to work on. But let's go on to another 
aspect of these 